Hey, this is Corey from Wolfpack Woodcraft. In today's video, I want to talk about preparedness. Uh, there's a lot of things that have made people want to start prepping. There are other people that have started and they want to make sure that they have a well-rounded, full kit. They have everything that they need. And I just want to make this video because a lot of people get so overwhelmed. Uh, they look at prepping as this big, huge thing. They look at it and they don't know how they're going to afford it. They don't know how they're going to get everything they need. And it's a lot easier than you would think. Uh, simply speaking, what preparedness means to me is it means eliminating fear. It means eliminating the question of what am I going to do next? Okay. And so when it comes to starting to prepare, just think about what scares you. What is something that you are scared of and how can you prepare yourself in a way where it's not as scary anymore? Uh, more recently, we had a outbreak and we had people panic buying toilet paper. Uh, I don't know why they were buying toilet paper, but they were. Uh, luckily, it was toilet paper and not something more important like food. But the thing is, is with that toilet paper, people invested a lot of money in toilet paper and people have gone crazy over this toilet paper thing. Now, what we have learned is we have learned that people were going 10 to 15 days without toilet paper. And just imagine if that intensity, if that panic buy was towards food, okay? So now we're going 10 to 15 days without food. Uh, imagine the same thing if it was towards medications. Uh, now you're going 10 to 15 days without medicines. All right. So these are things that people are scared of. They're scared of not being able to feed their family. They're scared of not being able to have the medications that they need or the first aid supplies that they need to take care of their family. So that's where you start. You start at the thing that you are scared of and you prepare in a way that eliminates that fear. And so for me, uh, one of the things is I want to make sure that I can always feed my family. So years ago, I didn't have the hindsight that I have right now of the 15 days. I knew that panic buying was a thing. I knew that uh, in some kind of situation where the semis couldn't get to the stores, the stores were going to run out of food. And so those were the things that were going through my head. And so I wanted to make sure that I had a stockpile of food so that I could comfortably feed my family even if the stores didn't have food that I myself would still be able to eat. And so what me and Caroline did is we meal planned for a whole month of 31 days. Uh, 31 days is the longest month. So we picked a month with 31 days and we meal planned our lunch and our dinner for the entire month. And what Caroline would do is she went grocery shopping just like she normally would, nothing different. And instead of picking up everything for that week she picked up two of everything for that week and so instead of getting a Bacchus box of spaghetti for lunch she got two and then we would eat one and then we would have one stored and by the end of the month we had a 31 day supply of food uh, we had a whole month's worth of food at our disposal that we had access to uh, only because we bought two of everything instead of one. And so that eliminated a lot of our fears. We had a whole month's worth of food and we didn't, there, it didn't take any extra time. It didn't take any extra planning. Uh, we simply just meal planned for a month. We took all the meals that we like to eat. We wrote them down. Uh, we had a month filled with delicious food that we enjoy. And then we had that same food stockpiled and it was super easy. Now, not everybody's going to be able to buy a whole month's worth of double their food, but having three days extra, right? Meal planning for three days and buying two of everything for those three days or maybe a week or two weeks or whatever it is. Uh, hopefully you can get as close to that 10 to 15 days as possible. Now, more about the 15 than the 10. But, you know, just start small and just double what you buy and eventually you will have a stockpile of everything you need. 
Uh, same with medical supplies. If you buy a box of bandages, buy two instead of one. Uh, if you buy ibuprofen, buy two bottles instead of one. And if you just double up like that, uh, eventually you're going to have a nice system where you can adequately have all the supplies you need uh, regardless of what will happen outside, right? And so the system that we did, we have a full month's worth of food. And the other thing that we did with that is, so she bought two, we ate one because that was what was planned for dinner. And then the other one was stockpiled. As soon as I ate this one, she went to the store and she would buy two more. So that way we always had one to eat and one to save. But if we were going through it faster than she was shopping, so let's say I ate this one, I would write craft spaghetti on our whiteboard. And then if I ate the last one, the last one was always worth two. And so I would put uh, next to craft spaghetti, I would put times three to make sure that she bought three instead of two because we always want to have that one extra. So let's say I ate the one, I would put craft spaghetti, and then I eat another one, I go times two because I ate two. And then if I ate the third one, then she, I would put times four because the last one's worth two, and then she would buy four boxes. And then from there, we always have one extra. Even if I eat all three of these boxes, uh, I still have one extra. Okay, we even have another one. So I can have a box of spaghetti every week for a whole month and I still have one extra. So we always have that 31 days. And so that's something that was important to us is to make sure that we had food to eat. We had the ability to take care of ourselves. Even if every store in the world went down, we could be just fine for the next 31 days. Uh, the other thing is a lot of people, they hoard, okay? Like the toilet paper, people were buying like a billion things of toilet paper and spending just an outrageous amount of money on it. And you don't need a thousand boxes of spaghetti, right? As soon as the fear is gone, as soon as you feel confident and comfortable in your preparedness, that's when you're done. That's when you can stop. Okay, you don't need a hundred boxes of spaghetti and a hundred things of this and a billion things of that. As soon as that fear goes away, that's when you know that you're prepped and ready and you can move on to the next thing. All right. So once you have your food, your water, uh, your tools, uh, tools are really important because again, you want to want to maintain your home. If a maintenance guy can't come, if the carpenters can't come, you want to be able to maintain your home and having the tools to do so is important. Uh, first aid is important. Once you have all those supplies, once you're comfortable and you don't feel scared that you're going to run out, uh, that's when you're ready to move on to the next step. All right, so you start with food, and then you go to water, and then you go to the next thing that scares you, and the next thing that scares you, the things that you're scared of running out of, uh, you do them in order. And then once you have all your supplies, then you move on to events, all right? And so event could be power outage. One of the things that scared me the most once I had my supplies was the power going out in the middle of winter. So I live in Minnesota where the winters can be negative 40, negative 50 degrees, uh, very, very cold. And in those extreme cold temperatures, a lot of times vehicles won't start. Uh, so I couldn't rely on my vehicle for heat. I couldn't rely on my vehicle to get me to somewhere with electricity and heat. Uh, I couldn't, I can't walk and expose myself to that temperature for long periods of time to get to somewhere that does have heat. And it was something that really scared me. It was something that I was really worried about. And so what I did is I bought heaters. And so I have a Mr. Buddy heater and then I have this tech sport heater. And then I have the fuel to go along with it. And I learned how to use this stuff. And so by owning it, 
Okay, I still was scared because I didn't know how to use it. I didn't know if I was going to be able to use it properly. I didn't know if I was going to be able to have a window open to vent these things because they create a lot of carbon monoxide. And so if I'm not going to be able to properly heat myself. And so I learned the skills. So having it helped with the fear. Learning the skill eliminated the fear. And that's something that I want to bring to your attention as well. Is it's not, it's not just having this stuff. Okay, having this stuff is going to make you feel good. It's going to make that fear smaller, but it's not going to eliminate it until you have the skill to go with it. Uh, the ability to cook this stuff, the ability to use this without worrying: Did I hook it up right? Is it working correctly? Is it? heating us up enough is there a better way of using this thing is it going to fall over and start a fire is all these little worries that can come with these things are just as bad as the fear itself of not having it and so skill and items need to go hand in hand same as a plan and the preps need to work together they go hand to hand as well the skills the items the plan needs to all work in harmony and so keep that in mind all right the other thing is food a lot of people will get the food and they won't do it the way i did it they will just buy a bunch of uh, canned food or they'll buy a bunch of boxes of spaghetti and then they'll forget the, the sauce or they'll forget the can opener and by doing it one step at a time, all right? Don't buy a whole bunch of everything at a time. Don't buy heaters and food and flashlights and this and that and the next thing. Just focus on one thing at a time. Focus on heating, all right? When you're in that event phase and you're working on a power outage kit, one thing at a time, not the whole power outage, one thing. Heating, eating, and then... Uh, Cooling, if you have little battery fans, those work really well. Uh, flashlights, having a flashlight that's easily accessible so that you can either use it for light. You can. This will probably be the light that I use. Uh, or I can use this flashlight to go get my other lights and my other lanterns, depending on what the power outage was caused by. And so, one thing at a time. The other thing is, when it comes to power outage, the refrigerator, I try to keep the fridge and the freezer sealed. I don't want to open them at all. And so like spaghetti is something that I learned to make on my camp stoves. And so spaghetti is something that I bought a lot more of. I have nine boxes here, one per week. I doubled it and then I have an extra uh, pancake mix. I have a large thing of pancake mix. Uh, ramen noodles, I have a lot of them. I have a lot of different soups and noodles and rice and these things allow me to cook and have food i can put peanut butter on my pancakes i can make a peanut butter sandwich uh, it allows me to cook without opening that fridge all right so the preparedness the blackout kit is something that helps me accomplish different things so the more you prep in one specific thing the more you're prepared for things that you haven't even thought of yet. So it becomes easier and easier and easier and easier as you go on. Uh, something that I wanted to mention is my fridge starts making weird noises sometimes and I'm worried about it dying. Well, because of my power outage kit, uh, if my fridge dies and all the food goes rotten on the inside, I still have plenty of food. Not because I planned on my fridge dying, not because I was afraid of it dying or that I even prepped for that. I had no intentions of being ready for my fridge dying, but because of the other preparations that I put in place, if my fridge dies, it's not a big deal. I'm not scared of it dying. If everything in there goes bad, it's gonna suck. Like all these things that could happen suck, but I'm ready and I'm prepared. And that's something that I think that a lot of people, if their fridge went down, if their fridge just stopped working, it'd be devastating. They'd be, how am I going to afford it? What am I going to do now? I can't afford another fridge. All that food's going to go bad. I have almost of the things that I eat in there. Uh, there's a lot of people that 
it, that would cripple them. But because I prepped in other ways, I'm not worried about it. It's not going to be a financial burden. It's not going to be a, I'm not going to go hungry. Uh, it's just one of those things that can happen and that I'm ready for because of this. And that's why I feel prepping this way is so important because instead of having a bunch of stuff that you might need, right? You have everything you need for one thing, everything you need for another thing, and then those two can merge together and then you're ready for something you never even planned for. So hopefully that makes sense. I know I didn't explain it the best, but hopefully you understood where I was going with that. And that's what I wanted to bring to you today. It's not as hard as it, everybody makes it seem like it's so difficult and it's not. Uh, the way I like to think about it is like building a wall. Okay, if you're building a great wall, you look at how big that wall needs to be and you're like, this is gonna take forever and this is gonna be so much work and it's, it's so overwhelming and you don't believe you can do it because it's just huge. Well, if you look at it a different way and you just think of it one brick at a time, right? If you look at a brick and you make it as level and as perfect as you possibly can, and then you move on to the next brick and you make it as level and as perfect as you possibly can, you will accidentally make a great wall. And it might be 10 times bigger than the wall that overwhelmed you, but you're not focused on that. You're focused on the one brick at a time. And by doing so, you have accidentally built a great humongous wall. All right, and that's how I take prepping. That's how I take preparedness one brick at a time, one situation at a time, one item at a time, and eventually you will be as prepared as anybody else, maybe even more prepared than the people you watch here on YouTube. So in that comment section, tell me, what are you scared of? What is something that you fear? And I will try my best to help you prepare and eliminate that fear, either through a video or a comment. And I cannot wait to see you in my next video.